Hello everyone and welcome to the channel. I'm Emmanuel, I'm an A330 pilot and in this video I want to give you a little bit of a guidance on how to taxi a white body airplane and how to taxi a um, heavy Airbus aircraft. So, we are going to start with a little bit of theory while we begin. So, first of all, most Airbus white body aircraft are going to start to roll on their own when the park and brake is released. So let's go ahead and start with that. My park and brake is off. Let's also quickly turn on the taxi and the turn off lights. And you can see the airplane starts to move all but on its own with the engines in idle thrust. Now, obviously, you could increase thrust in order to continue accelerating a little bit stronger. However, that is not really necessary and only puts additional strain on the brakes. Basically, when you increase thrust now in order to get rolling quicker, then you also have to take out thrust or energy again very soon in order to break the airplane down. So, energy management is the first important thing. The second important thing is the oversteering technique. And this is going to be important whenever we reach our turns, pretty much any turns along our way. So, in any airplane that is longer than a Cessna, you somewhat have to do a little bit of an oversteering in order to get your airplane to stay where you want it to be. Now, the longer the airplane, the more drastic this gets. We're currently taxiing an Airbus A340-600, which is one of the longest passenger jets you will find around, with the Boeing 747-8 being another one. The important point over here is that you want to keep your main wheel close to the center line of the taxiway. So if you look at this, this is basically what we want to be on the center line of the taxiway. And as you can see, that means we need to oversteer our flight deck quite a bit. Now, some of those aircraft have taxi cameras available and the A340 is one of them. So if you have them, you're more than welcome to switch it on. The 777 is another example of an aircraft that needs a taxi camera. Now. Have a look at this. We are going quite away over with our cockpit over the center line that we're supposed to taxi on. But have a look at where the main wheels are. These are just about reaching the line. And this is the moment where I start to turn. But look at how this looks from the cockpit on how far I have to oversteer. But if we are now moving outside, you can see our main wheels are located pretty much on the center line where we are supposed to taxi. Now this needs quite a bit of getting used to. And this is also part of the reason why there are restrictions in place in some airports for very long aircraft like the A340 or the 747. Now, restrictions or not, in any case, you need to get somewhat accustomed to how you can taxi your airplane. And I want to give you a little bit of guidance on how to get a proper feeling for your plane in order to learn how to taxi it better. Now, First of all, let me share my experience with you from taxiing the Airbus A330, which is not as large as the 340, but still a pretty long airplane, especially when you're standing in front of it and just look at it from the bottom, like during the walk around or if you are boarding through, well, stairs without a jetway. But Let's start with how you can get a better feeling for your airplane when you are taxiing it. First of all, we need to keep it on the center line. Now, when you're going straight like we are right now, then keeping the airplane on the center line is actually quite easy. Now, regardless of how big the airplane is, the pilot seats are basically always going to be just in the middle of the plane with just about the pedestal in front of you or rather in between you. So. First of all, in order to get your airplane rolling, you can do quite easy. If you're sitting on the captain's seat, just put the center line through your right hand knee. If you're sitting on the first officer's seat, put it through your left hand knee. Now, if you have a look at this, you can see that it looks like we are basically sitting straight on the center line. A lot of pilots in real life, just like in the simulator, do tend to overestimate the size of their airplane. But if we look in the taxi cam, we can see that we are straight on the center line with the nose wheel. So don't overestimate the size of your airplane, but much rather focus on the fact that regardless how big your airplane is, you are usually sitting just about in the middle of it with 
maybe the thrust lever is being exactly in the middle, but that little meter over here, or half a meter, or whatever this is, really doesn't make too much of a difference for when you're taxiing the plane. So, as you can see, we are pretty much perfectly on it. Now, many aircraft also have little tricks implemented. For example, in the most Airbus aircraft, if you put the centerline either between the primary flight display and the navigation display, or if you put it on top of a little screw that you can find up here on some Airbus types, then you will probably be exactly on centerline. Now, as you're approaching a turn, and I'm going to make a slight right-hand turn onto here just to give you a little demonstration, if you, as you're approaching a turn, the key factor is determining initially how much do you need to overshoot with the nose, and then secondly, whereabout does the airplane turn around. Now, first of all, in order to conduct a proper turn, we need to be at a proper speed. You can see we're going 13 knots right now, so let's break it down a little bit. We don't want more than 10 knots. With aircraft that are accelerating themselves during taxi, like the A340 and the A330R, you want to bring it to somewhere to about 7 knots. Now we need to overshoot a little bit, and this just comes down to experience. And once you're turning, try to imagine where about the middle of the airplane is and then you can turn it nicely about that middle as you can see and without the use of taxi camera if we look at it you can see that we are right on the uh, center line as we're supposed to be so let's do a second exercise this time going back to the left and i'm steering a little bit earlier now just to show you what it looks like you can somewhat see that the plane is turning about a point somewhere over here so if i'm continuing the turn you will see that I'm ending up to the left of the center line now, as you can see over here. So that is how you can guesstimate where about you want to turn your airplane around. The next important thing over here is brake management. So we need to keep in mind that we've got carbon brakes on most of those modern aircraft. And carbon brakes wear down per brake application. So our target is to apply as little brake as we possibly need. Now, in order to do that, first of all, minimize thrust increase as much as you can. So, do use the thrust when you need it, but think about if you really need it. For example, right now, going to the holding point over there, and with a turn up coming over here, we don't need any thrust. And as you can see, for the most part of our taxi, I didn't use any thrust at all. I basically kept the engines in idle pretty much all the time. Now, going into a turn, make one continuous smooth brake application. Don't drag the brakes, but bring them down gently. Reduce the speed to a little bit below what you'll need for the turn. As I just mentioned, for example, 7 knots going into a 90 degree turn on a plane that is slowly accelerating an idle thrust is usually a good number. And then smoothly steer the airplane around the turn. Be very careful, however, that you don't accidentally stop the airplane while you're in a turn, as it can be very, very difficult to get the airplane moving again without excessive thrust. This gets especially important when you're taxiing uphill and if you've got an airplane close to a maximum takeoff weight. But just to give you an idea of the possibilities of where the airplane might still taxi itself, we're sitting in an A340 right now. And as you can see, our gross weight is 300 tons roundabout, and the plane is still accelerating all on its own. A good indicator of how well your brake performance is is the wheel page where you can see brake temperatures. Now, as you're about to reach the runway, if you have done really well on a modest taxi like what we did over here in Munich, then your brake temperatures will not rise more than 50 degrees. Do keep in mind that you've got brake temperature restrictions for your departure. So if the airplane came in and had a short turnaround, and you are now taxiing out for your next flight, and you start the taxi with the brakes close to the limit of where you can still take off with them, then be very careful with the brake applications that you use. A final point over here is where to stop your airplane when you need to hold shot in front of something. We're approaching the holding point of runway 08 left at Munich over here and we want to make sure that we don't stop too far behind but we also don't want to go over the line. So of course we could use the taxi cam but that would be cheating so let's go ahead and turn that off. Instead, what you should do is to taxi up to the line until you can just about see it in front of your glare shield. 
Now, depending on the airplane, you might actually want to take it through the glare shield like I'm doing right now. We're sitting pretty high up here in the Airbus, around 6 meters above the ground, so sometimes just looking out to the side can give you a good indication of where you actually are. Look at where I stopped right now. If we look out, it really looks like we might be getting onto the runway over here, but if we're moving to the outside for a second, you can see that I stopped the airplane just in front of the actual hold short line. So, once again, an easy trick for you to use over there is to look out slightly to the side if you want to be able to see the line and then just position yourself like two or three meters in front of that line. Obviously, if you're taxiing a 747, you've got that whole nose and the first class in front of you, so you need to stop a little bit further back. If you're taxiing an airplane where the cockpit is really all the way in the front, then you can stop somewhere like this. A single exception that I would make over here with regards to stopping the airplane is if you've got a stop bar at the hold short line, then I would actually stop the airplane with the stop bar still visible in front of my cockpit so that it is easier to see later on when we get our line of clearance, or when we get our clearance just cross the stop bar. Alright, that is going to conclude today's video. I do hope you learned something on this one, and if you did, then do let me know in the comments below. Again, the most important points over here, anticipate that you have to oversteer with the nose, use the taxi cam if you have one, for example the A340-600 or the 777-300ER do have taxi cameras available. However, even if you've got an airplane that does not have a taxi camera, do take the first couple of turns that you do when you taxi the plane for the first time to determine the point around which the airplane is turning and then later on you can use that in order to judge where your airplane is going. Finally, don't use excessive thrust since using excessive thrust means that you also have to dissipate all the energy that you put into it. As you can see, we taxied to the runway pretty much with the engines in idle for the entire time and we are loaded up for a complete 8 hour flight from Munich towards New York with a maximum passenger load here for Lufthansa aircraft. Seeing the gross weight around 300 tons and still the airplane rolled nicely in idle. As you can see my brake temperatures are now in the region of about 50 degrees so that is quite a good indication. Means that I didn't use too much braking and therefore protected the airplane and reduced the cost for the company. Talking about cost for the company, most modern white body aircraft have carbon brakes installed and they do wear down per application and not per strength of using them. So try to use continuous brake inputs like so and try not to make several small brake inputs like this in a row. That is not going to be good for your um, company's costs. One of my instructors actually used to say every time I used a small brake application like that's $40, that's $40 for every single one of them and that actually greatly helped me to get my uh, braking under control. Alright, now it's your turn. Take out your favorite wide body aircraft or take out your favorite narrow body aircraft as the same principles do basically apply to narrow body aircraft as well. Thank you very much for watching, I do hope that you enjoyed this one, if you did do let me know in the comments below, I'm looking forward to your feedback and if you're up for more don't forget to subscribe to the channel. If you did like the video do leave a like in YouTube as well as it does help with the algorithms and finally if you really love what I'm doing I would appreciate a small donation through the buy me coffee link in the video description below. In the meantime thank you for watching and I see you all again on the next one.